this was wonderful. And, and I got to work with and form friendships with some immensely talented people. Um, yeah. And I must say, and I could get very emotional saying this, but one of the things that I have been proudest of is going down to Leavesden and looking at all these people with all these jobs, hundreds and hundreds of people. And occasionally I've looked and I've thought, my God, you know, these people have jobs because I had an idea on a train once. That is so overall, the experience of the films for, for, for the initial writer has been outstanding. There's a huge amount of action in this. It's, it's a war movie, actually. Um, part one is a, is a road movie. Part two is a war movie, with everything that implies. It's incredibly sad in places. It's very exciting in places. And I feel that all of the major characters have sublime moments. Um, what I always mentally refer to as the big seven, which is Harry, Ron, Hermione, um, Ginny, Neville, Luna and Draco. So for me the big seven get all of them have fantastic moments in this final cathartic battle. Um, yeah, you can probably tell I love it. I love it. I think it's um, probably the best. A huge theme throughout the seven books and, and, and the films. Um, Dumbledore expressed it right at the beginning of the series, at the end of Philosopher's Stone, when he said, Harry says he's not gone. And Dumbledore says, no, but if the next person fights him and the next person fights him, you know, we can keep him down. And that goes to the heart, really, of the series, which is the question, why fight? Why fight? We accept the inevitability of evil in the world and we accept that things can't always be fair. We accept that things will never be perfect. Why fight? Why fight? And that's a question that all of the characters answer in their different ways. And some characters say, I'm not fighting. I have to accept the inevitable. And other characters say, I will fight till I die to make the world a better place, to save a friend, you know, and that, that I suppose that's what the final battle is about. They do it perfectly in the film. They really, they, and that was that was a um, place where I was very glad they were faith, faithful to the book because um, Snape's journey is so is so important and such a linchpin of the books. And the plot can't function without Snape. But he's much more than just a conduit for information. He is he's an interesting character, and he is. I, I think all of my characters, without exception, Harry included, are flawed. Um, I don't think we have a single wholly good or wholly bad person, with the exception of, of Voldemort. I mean, he is wholly bad. There's no redemption there. Walking into the Great Hall in 2000, maybe, was it? I think it must have been about 2000 was the first time I did that. It was amazing. It was wonderful. It was exactly, but exactly as I had imagined it. And um, Chris Columbus and Stuart Craig, I talked to them uh, about how I saw it, and they had just... God, they have done such a magnificent job. I actually didn't want to see it destroyed. And seeing it destroyed on film was awful, horrible. I think everyone will feel that if they followed the films all the way through. You, you get such a sense of, um, I suppose, the, just how serious the situation is, just how destructive this, this war has become. It's a very intense feeling I have for them because they've lived, they have literally lived in my world and they've, they've done it such honour, really, that because they've, they've been so magnificent in the, in the way that they've grown up and played their parts. And it just so happens, which is actually the most important thing of, of all, that they are three fantastic people. You know, you'd go a long way to find three brighter, nicer, more grounded people than Dan, Rupert and Emma. I always had the feeling that Rupert just knew. I always had the feeling I may be wrong. I mean, if you interview Rupert, he he might say differently. But my my strong feeling with Rupert was that he got Ron inside out and that he... Uh, I don't know that he ever needed anyone to tell him. Just knew. Dan is as one of the most inquiring minds I've ever met. Dan wants to know, he wants to understand, and he does, and he makes sure he masters it, and then he does it. And Emma, uh, well, she just... Um, there's sufficient overlap between Emma and Hermione that she, she, she could 
she's just a poster girl for clever girls, isn't she? She's, she was wonderful. But she could do so much more than just be the nerd. And I think that, in, particularly in the last film, she showed that. You know, when she and, she and um, Dan are playing these two characters who are alone, the depth of emotion Emma, Emma came up with there was extraordinary.